Hello, this is Brian Oltrovi from Grunblau Design Studio. In a previous tutorial, we built an automotive rim. In this tutorial, we'll build the tire that goes around that rim using flow along surface and flow along curve in order to construct the tread pattern that will wrap around the surface. So in this, you can see that I have some objects set up in space. Uh, here you'll recognize from the rim tutorial that this is the rim piece that that will hold the tire in place. All of these dimensions for these tutorials are basically taken directly from dimensions of a rim including offset and uh, bolt pattern etc. Here you'll see that this is just a simple surface using this black curve as a revolve. This black curve representing what a ball tire might look like and the green representing where I would like the tread pattern to rise to. Over here you'll see the tread and I just googled an image of tread pattern and then uh, copied a part of it and then arrayed it about the length that I would require to wrap around this rim. And you can find that approximate length by simply doing analyze length it asks curves to measure and it would be this curve right here hit enter and that's about 73.65 inches long and that's about what this is uh, same for the sidewall so you just analyze that length the the reason why it needs to be close is if it isn't there'll be some unexpected um, stretching or squishing of your geometry uh, depending on if it's too long or too short so the first thing that we're going to need to do is to look at the tread profile and the tire profile. Now our tread is drawn on a flat plane. So in order to wrap this flat plane onto a curved object and have it behave the way that we want it to, we're going to have to uh, flatten the tread as if it was sort of a tire retread that we we're then going to wrap onto a ball tire. So in order to do that, we'll use uh, Flow Along Curve. So go to Transform, Flow Along Curve. It's going to ask objects to flow along curve. That's going to be the tread profile. Hit Enter. And the base curve. The base curve is basically the spine of this object uh, as it exists now. And then the target curve is the spine of the object as you want it to be and make sure stretch equals yes is on. So I'm going to click that. And now you can see that this would be this if it was flattened. That's the curve that we want to turn this into. So now we need to extrude our rubber and then edit it with this curve that we just made. So I'm going to extrude close planar curves and we want that to go 0.5 just high enough that we can then boolean out what we don't want so in order to do that we're going to add some more geometry here in order to to make something that we can edit this with so I'm going to go one inch out say two inches up one inch out, two inches up, and now we'll extrude this shape all the way across these new objects that we made and boolean them out. So extrude all the way across, just an arbitrary amount, so it goes across everything. And then we'll have to look in the uh, front or the side view. I'm going to change to wireframe so I can easily select everything. And I'm going to do boolean difference. So it says select surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from. That would be all of these, which are the extruded tread. Hit enter. Surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract with would be this object. Hit enter. Okay, you can see that that worked, and I also wanted to note that I left a little bit extra 
there just so I knew that boolean would work. Sometimes when you have endpoints match up on boolean, it, it will fail. So let's check out our new retread. And I'll go to ghosted so we can see a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. In order to select this easier, I'm going to do edit, select objects, last created objects, and then group those just so they're easier to select next time. Okay. So now our task is to wrap this retread onto this tire. So we do that by using flow along surface. So I go to transform, flow along surface, objects to flow would be the tread, but make sure that you just grabbed the tread. So I'm going to unselect that and make sure that I just got the tread, not the curves as well. Hit enter, select base surface, and it says to select near a corner. So it's important where you select based on how it's going to wrap around the tire. So I'm going to select here, which means on this model I need to select here. Okay. And since I was careful when I drew this, you can see that the tread pattern is continuous as it passes over that seam. I'm going to fit view and I'm going to go ahead and hide that geometry just so that we're not rendering extra stuff. And we want to put something on the sidewall here. So I have these objects and we'll do flow along surface again. So transform, flow along surface, base surface, select near corner. So we'll select there and select here. And there's our new tire. Now let's bring this all together into a complete model. Here you can see the finished model complete with brake disc and caliper.